you might come across many unexpected and unsolicited challenges after you get married. You might even find your partner a lot different than they were in the dating phase. Not just your partner, by the way, their parents too. They might also seem to be altogether different entities than how you perceive them to be at the inception. But this is pretty common. The more time you spend with your spouse and their family, the more mysteries you will unravel with time. Remember, for better or for worse, in-laws are part of your life. Plus, there is also a high probability that your spouse is quite fond of their family. So that means you will have to find your way to like them, accept them, or figure out how to coexist and keep the peace. Before we look at how to deal with disrespectful or toxic in-laws, welcome back to my channel. If you're joining me for the first time, my name is Sharifa Namsisi. I'm a marriage counselor, CBT therapist, and a life coach at Let's Fix It Individual and Couples Counseling. How do we deal with toxic in-laws? Uh, well, without a doubt, the dynamics differ from family to family. It's all about how tightly knit the families are. Relationships with your in-laws are always very, very tricky. You can still aim to make peace with your disrespectful in-laws and live a fulfilling marriage with your spouse if you deal with the situation smartly and appropriately. Where there is a problem, there is always a solution too, and you must never forget this. There are a handful of ways through which you can demand respect while not demeaning yourself to their standards. You need to learn how to set boundaries with in-laws while maintaining your dignity. That's the most important tip. Set your boundaries right at the inception don't try to put up a facade and portray yourself to be overly sweet and accommodating. Show your partner and their family who you are in real sense. Like Balagide Wachicholi from day one, show them that there are some lines they will not have to cross. Let everyone know that this is your endurance level, right? And let them know that you do not prefer anyone crossing it. You don't have to be disrespectful, but you can always assertively take a stand. If you wish to have a peaceful life, with fewer roadblocks, boundaries with in-laws, and even your partner is essential. Tip number two, seek your spouse's help. If you have disrespectful in-laws, let your spouse know. Don't try to deal with your spouse's family all by yourself with the intent of not hurting them. This can cause a greater hurt to your relationship if not tackled at the outset. Don't resort to yapping about your disrespectful in-laws to your spouse. This is nothing less than you shooting yourself in the foot. Without manipulating, try telling the truth to your partner when they are in a receptive mode. You can let your spouse know the facts and request them to deal with their parents or their relatives. Your spouse might be knowing some magic formula to effectively handle their parents and relatives and save you from the fiddling with Pandora's box. Before I proceed to tip number three, um, Y'all need to realize that some of your relatives are extremely toxic. Badina and Pisa AMB, yet you don't protect your spouses from them. I need to remind you that in order for your marriage to flourish, both husband and wife need to leave their families and start a new one together. Start a new home together. From that moment, they need to be number one in each other's life. That does not mean that they don't love and care about their parents. No, it simply means that the top priority has now changed from parents to spouse. The family you create should always take priority over the family you came from. There cannot be any divided loyalties. When you get married and start your own family, that's where your primary loyalty needs to be. Even in the heat of a fight, you need to stand by your spouse, especially if your spouse is right. In the name of Smanya, blood is thicker than water. Even at the detriment of your spouse's sanity? Come on, it's the job of each partner to check their respective families and protect their relationship. How, you ask? One, always present a united front. This is how you protect the relationship. If you and your partner have agreed that your family has crossed a boundary, don't throw your partner under the bus with comments like, hmm, no, no, my wife doesn't like it when you come in. Hey, my husband doesn't want you to be coming here. That's a cop-out. Co it completely absolves you of any involvement in the matter 
and leaves room for divisive tactics to penetrate. Instead, present a united front. Your statement should sound like, by the way, we don't like X, Y, Z. By the way, we were made to feel uncomfortable when A, B, C, D happened. Accept that your family might be upset with you, but protecting your family from in-laws means that sometimes you will not be able to keep the peace. You will have to stand up for your partner, and that may mean that your family will be upset with you. The sooner you make peace with that, the better off you will be. Failure to stand up to your family will ultimately lead to resentment in your marriage. The priority is to protect your spouse from the toxicity of some of your family members. You can't always go like, ah, Come on. Some of you even let your relatives speak poorly to your partner. How? This should go without saying. You should never allow your relatives to feel comfortable speaking negatively about your partner. Ever. You should always be the one to shut them down. You should be the one to shut down snide comments and nasty comments, whether your spouse is around to hear them or not. Echidala, don't make excuses for your relative's bad behavior. Call out bad behavior on the part of your family instead of excusing it. We become accustomed to the dysfunction of our families and often expect our partners to do the same, which is very unfair. If your brother makes a nasty remark to your spouse, don't go like, oh, he's just like that. It's, it's an unacceptable response. Check your brother and apologize to your partner. There is also a need to deal with the other woman dynamic. The other woman in every man's life is his mother. Yeah? To the men who always say, You know, always making comparisons. Well, um, my mother does it this way. Rachina we see what we And my mom cooks the matoke differently. Rachina we talk about you. Well, maybe you need to head back to your mom's house and sleep there. I mean, how dare you even make such comparisons? Learn to strike a balance between your wife and your mother. And none of the two will be placed above each other because their roles differ. It is worthy to remind you that there is at least one thing your mother can do, but your wife can't do. And also, there is at least one thing your wife can do, but your mother will never do. Your mother gives birth to you, which your wife cannot attempt. Your wife gives birth to your children, which your mother won't dare do. It is worthy to remind you that there is a level of wisdom required by a man to deal honorably with his wife and mother for peace to reign in his home. One of the greatest mistakes done by men is to attempt to compare their wives with their moms. You can't expect your wife to be like your mother or vice versa. Everyone is an individual entity with a unique style and attribute. Last but not least, you don't protect your partner from your in-laws when you're always busy sharing your marital problems with your parents. Gwenga ever guava geya muchala what your relatives, as in, you know, if there is an issue, discuss it with your spouse. You fix problems in a marriage within a marriage, not by turning away from your partner towards your parent. You can love your parents and have a rich, active relationship with them without involving them in your marriage. And remember, if you vent to your parents every time you're angry or hurt, they will build a case against your partner. You and your spouse may make up but your folks will still remember the hurt your spouse has caused you and may even hold a grudge. Let's go to tip number three on how to deal with toxic in-laws. Maintain a good distance. If you and your spouse have tried everything possible with your disrespectful in-laws and nothing works, you can always keep a safe distance from them. You can choose to talk and meet as little as possible, you know, Whenever you need to meet your disrespectful in-laws, make sure that you don't meet them alone. Try to catch up in presence of your spouse or other people such that you don't need to indulge in an awkward conversation with them. You can always try to be respectful towards them, but certainly not at the cost of your dignity and mental well-being. If, any time you if at any time you find yourself losing your mental balance, eh, by all means, you can choose to stay away from them. It's allowed. 
oba wa wasa muchala wo si chikacho na if they fail to cooperate best when you overlap inga kumikolo tip number 4 focus more on you know worthwhile activities if you're having an overbearing mother-in-law or father-in-law you don't have to spend most of your time you know hitting the roof try to realize that your rude in-laws are just part of your life and not your entire life unless you allow them to be if there is no way you can change their malefic behavior swim with the tide focus more on doing what you really like it can be your career or your hobbies or spending time with your friends make a deliberate effort to spend your time constructively than ruminating over what they said or their hostile activities tip number five negotiate with your partner the role you want your in-laws to have in your life in your relationship don't assume you're on the same page until you talk about it lean into each other and decide together what your stance is about the role the in-laws play in your relationship Tip number six, try to avoid knee-jerk reactions. When your in-laws say something offensive or out of line, your first instinct may be to return fire. Rest assured, the only thing you'll accomplish here is escalating the situation. Instead, try to steer clear of the knee-jerk reactions. When your in-laws cross a line, try to give yourself some distance before addressing the situation. Whether it's a few hours or a few days, a little breathing room can give everyone some time to temper their response. In the end, you will likely find that your conversation is far more productive. Tip number seven, do not ignore the problem. Ignoring a problem until it goes away is not a good answer for any issue, including those with your in-laws. Turning the other cheek can seem like an easier choice for many. However, it's kind of like kicking a can down the road. Eventually, someone would reach a big pile of cans that they have to climb over. If you're struggling with your in-laws, you may want to actually lean into the discomfort and speak up. In order to keep the peace and your sanity, it's important to address issues as they come, sooner rather than later. When in-laws or anyone for that matter are given, to, are given too much latitude, Things can quickly get out of control. Don't be afraid to set clear limits. If weekly sand branches are a bit too much, well, think about knocking it down to once a month or once in two months. If money matters or unsolicited parenting advice are off the table, then say something. People cannot read your mind. Brother in Lomugambe, he cannot show up drunk every time, you know, uninvited. If he cannot call, the door will not be opened. Simple. Speak directly to the offending party. Respectfully, but clearly. Tip number eight. Look for common ground. You might have to be intentional about building a healthy relationship with your in-laws. Try to find things that you can bond over. You know, it takes really nothing. It doesn't cost anything. You could try cooking with your mother-in-law. She can teach you an old family recipe every other month. Or you can make it a habit to just send your father-in-law videos of the kids. You know, they're still your family. You want to try and maintain the peace. Try to be flexible too. Try to let smaller infractions slide. If grandma gives your kids too much candy on visits, maybe that is something you can just let go. Even if it's a big concern of yours, the point is to try and pick your battles when you can. You get it? And finally, Always be kind. Send a happy Mother's Day text. Give flowers. Costs nothing. Your kids are always watching and listening. So it's important to value kindness in all your interactions with family members and extended family. Extend kind greetings to your in-laws and speak in a respectful tone at all times, even if you don't feel like they do the same for you. No one wins if you try to treat others like they treat you. Someone has to be the, the bigger person. It's also very important to not involve the children. Children should never be used as pawns. Protect them from being manipulated or emotionally damaged by being in the middle of a war zone. Before I go, uh, as the PR manager for Educate and Open, well, you guys thought I had forgotten, I cannot forget to remind you to donate to our cause. Our NGO helps keep the less privileged orphans in school. So for more details on how to join us or to seek personalized assistance, reach me on 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.